Every living, breathing moment of a quail's life from egg to adult is dictated by the threat of predation. And so a lot of our management is designed has to account for that predation. Some of those predators we can handle in a lethal way, for example, raccoons, others we can't. Raptors, birds of prey, they're protected by both state and federal laws. So we're basically forced to say, what are some non-lethal alternatives to create a habitat that is more conducive to quail and less friendly to hawks? Try to shift that competitive advantage from hawks over to quail. One of the, we've done several things here that relate to that and we'll describe those in just a second. I like to define the various types of raptors that we have as analogous to warplanes. I'm a big buff of old war films and so forth in military. And the old B-29s, the B-27s, the B-29s, the big lumbering slow bombers, those are the red tails, what we call the booty o hawks, the red tails, the Swainsons. They'll catch every quail they can, but they're not designed to catch quail. Then you go to the harriers, the marsh hawk, the northern harriers. These are the A-10 warthogs. They fly low across the landscape. They're more agile, I think, than what we give them credit for. And they're a pretty serious threat to quail during our uh, fall and winter months. We typically have harriers here from about 1st October through the end of April. And it's during that fall and winter early springtime when raptors exact their greatest toll on our quail populations. They're our number one source of mortality during that time for our wild quail. Uh, during the summertime, many of the hawks move north, they migrate north, so then we're dealing with more of a mammalian threat like bobcats, coons, coyotes, that kind of thing. But during that, about eight months a year, seven, eight months a year, raptors, hawks are one of our greatest threats. The hawk that quail fear the most, in my opinion, is called the Cooper's hawk. It is called an accipiter. It's a small falcon. Uh, a lot of the ranchers call it blue darter. You hardly ever see it. You never see it perched in a tree or up on a high line wire like that. And it is the F-16 of the hawk world. So it's designed for air-to-air -air combat. And it is a quail, an adult quail's greatest threat, in my opinion. And when you see quail in the presence of a hawk like that, it, it's, a, it's a sight to behold. One of the most interesting studies we've done here at the Quail Research Ranch, we've, we faced quail with various threats. Some were intended to mimic a coyote hunting at night. Others, a hunter. In other words, the bird dog would flush it. The, the hunter would fire up in the air twice. How does radio telemetry, we do a lot of that. How does that affect quail? How do they respond to that threat? But the one that's most interesting is how they respond to a raptor. And in this case, we used a goshawk. We used a trained falconer from Amarillo. He would walk in with this goshawk on his arm We'd lead him into where there was a radio mark caveat. When those birds flushed, how often could he catch quail? And what kind of escape route, what kind of endpoint did they uh, choose in this landscape? And it was really, really interesting. One of the most interesting experiments that we've done. For one thing, when those quail, those quail know that that hawk is in their presence, that hawk's making a little bit of noise, you can't hardly flush them. We'd nearly step on as many quail as we could get to fly. They're that respectful of that hawk. They don't want to leave that cover. But when they did, they flew extremely low, a very tortuous path, and they had the afterburners on. And when they came to an end point, it was one of typically one or two situations. A big acacia, cat claw acacia with burrows underneath, or one of the big South Texas type pairs. We discussed those quail houses in another segment. You can uh, watch about those. But having those kind of escape areas, storm shelters, if you will, on the landscape every two or 300 yards, I think is really important. When we flushed one of those quail and a hawk was on its tail, it was like those quail knew where every suitable escape cover was. Sometimes they'd fly four or 500 yards and then all of a sudden they'd dive right down into one, go underground to get away from that hawk. They went underground about 38% of the time. So again, a hawk, and especially an accipiter hawk, is a quail's worst nightmare. I tell people, if you're a horror movie fan, it's like Jason meets Freddy Krueger. That's how much respect they have for those Cooper's hawks. So again, we've got to try to create a habitat that shifts the advantage away from those hawks into the favor of the quail. One of the techniques that we use here at the Research Ranch a lot is radio telemetry. And by looking, when we have a mortality, we home in on that bird 
and we can tell by the signal if it's going beep, 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 if it's fairly fast like that, it indicates that that transmitter's been lying motionless for four hours. The bird's probably dead. And we move on in, look at the physical evidence. We play Quincy, we play CSI to try to determine who done it. And uh, today we're talking about Hawks. This would be the type of transmitter uh, untouched. I mean, the, the loop broke, but not predation related. A check, if you will. This is one that was killed by a mammal. Typically our quail are killed by one of two classes of critters, mammals or raptors. This one's killed by a mammal. The collar's been chewed, the antenna's been chewed, and so it just leaves kind of a mangled mess like that. And then here's one that shows classic raptor sign. Anytime you see a radio where the transmitter is curly cued like that, and the way that happens is that hawk puts it in its beak and it's pulling that antenna thinking it's a piece of tendon, and as a result of that, it's like pulling a hair through your fingernails and it does that curly cue. So anytime you see that, your suspect is a, is a raptor, is a hawk. We also look at the uh, physical evidence as far as the, the, the hawks will clip the wings off. There's some other signs that we look for at the kill site itself, but based on the radio transmitter, hawk, mammal, check. And by doing that, we can learn a lot about what we call cause-specific mortality. And that's an important statistic for us to know so we can manage our habitat based upon who our biggest threat is.